Hi, it's Alex. I've been wanting to talk about the election some time, the recent presidential election, and it's taken me a while to get my thoughts together. I found this recent presidential election, and the campaign leading up it, to it, to be extremely disturbing. There's a lot of stuff that I don't like about American politics, and that I have been frustrated with for some time, but like, the level of extremeness in this recent election, it just seemed to go through the roof. And I saw scary levels of negativity in different places. I saw some, frankly, really terrifying to me, levels of negativity coming out of Trump's campaign. Like, I saw Trump making xenophobic comments, um, comments disparaging people on the basis of their race, uh, disability, all sorts of other really nasty things, like misogynistic comments. And I was really disturbed by Donald Trump as a candidate, and by the things that he was saying, and by how much support he was getting. But I also saw some really disturbing things happening in left-wing circles as well. Like, during the primary between Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton, I saw really disturbing levels of negativity, even among people fairly close to me in my life. Like, I heard some Sanders supporters saying just awful things about Hillary, and about her supporters. And similarly, I heard awful things being said by Hillary's supporters about Bernie Sanders and his supporters. And this was before things kind of reached their peak. And this really bothers me on a lot of levels. Like, I think a lot of the comments made were going beyond just regular political negativity, and were getting into what I would call extremism. They involved dehumanizing language. And I want to start by looking at the stuff sort of closest to me. One thing that really bothered me during this campaign is the leaked comment from uh, Hillary Clinton's campaign about, like, the deplorables, like, the idea that people who vote for Donald Trump, or who support Donald Trump, are deplorable. That's a classic example of dehumanizing language. It's a negative label that you attach to people to say they're sort of not fully people, they're like not as valuable, they're not worthy of respect. I'm focusing on this comment because I voted for Hillary Clinton. I wanted her to become president. And I think it's really important for us to look first at ourselves, and at the movements that we support or identify with, and criticize those first, and work, work on them first, like approaching things in a more pure way before we start to criticize others. I think there's a long list of ways I could criticize Donald Trump, and criticize his supporters, but that's not what I want to do in this video. I want to call on us to look into ourselves, and look at how we're talking about people who hold views different from ourselves. And I want us to specifically look at the stuff that I think is hardest to look at, which is how we view and treat people who are doing things that we think are really, really bad. During this campaign, Donald Trump did a lot of things that I thought were really, really bad. Like, there was this tape that came out where he is basically bragging about sexual assault, bragging about sexually assaulting women, and saying that he can get away with it because he's famous. I found that really creepy. What I find really disturbing, though, is when people who are kind of close to me, people who have ideologies close to me, people who care about ending sexual assault, and breaking down rape culture, and things like that, when these people start making these dehumanizing personal attacks on Trump supporters, because they're like voting for this person who's made these comments. This really bothers me on a lot of levels. Like, I believe in respecting people unconditionally, and this may seem like a really radical stance, but I respect Donald Trump as a person. That doesn't mean that I agree with anything that he says. I might disagree with everything that he says. I actually don't. I do agree with some of the things that he says. And if someone is voting for Trump, and if they're, some, they're voting for Trump for reasons that I really don't think are good reasons, 
Well, I'm going to disagree with that too, but I still, I don't think that person is deplorable. I don't think it's healthy for me to hate that person, or to view them negatively. Like, I just, I don't think that kind of thinking has any beneficial role in our democracy. I think it just serves to make us more polarized. And I care about influencing people. Like, I'm, I'm upset that Trump won. Um, I wish that we could have seen things turn out differently, and I'm hoping to see things turn out differently in future elections. But the last thing I want to do is go around bashing and putting down Republicans, or putting down people who voted for Trump, or putting down people who support policies that I think are racist or xenophobic. I think it's okay to talk about a policy being racist or xenophobic, not a person. I don't want to bash these people, I want to get through to them. I want to converse with them, and I want to reach a consensus with them. I've found time and time again that when I get to know people who have really different political views from mine, they often have better reasons for believing them than I thought they did. And the more I get to know them, the more I listen to them, the more I understand them, the more validity I see in their viewpoints. I often still don't agree with them, and I may still find certain aspects of their reasoning very troubling, um, but I get closer to an understanding, and I find that I'm often able to find points of agreement. And I found that this process often results in the other person matching what I'm doing. Like, if I'm listening to someone, it makes it more likely that they listen to me. And if I'm treating them with respect, it makes them more likely to treat me with respect. If I'm generally considering their viewpoint, and kind of trusting that they have good faith, that they have some valid, positive reasons for believing in what they believe, even if I think that what they believe is awful, if I, if I have that trust in them, even if I don't see any evidence for that trust, if I just give them that trust, I've found that people often reciprocate that. They don't always reciprocate it, but they often reciprocate it, and they start listening to me when I'm voicing viewpoints that seem troubling or disturbing to them. And I've found that when I approach people this way, I'm able to influence them a lot more. And I think there are a lot of benefits to this. I think one of them is that it helps us to identify problems in our own viewpoints. Even though I voted for Hillary Clinton, I can come up with a long list of policy positions on which I disagree with her, uh, and sort of political philosophy values in which I disagree with her. And I can find ways in which I disagree with liberals in general. I'm not uniformly liberal in my political views, and when I talk to people who have more conservative views, even if I may disagree with them more than half the time, I, I still find a lot of things in there that I agree with. I find that they have valid criticisms of my viewpoints some of the time, and I gain insight by listening to them, even if they hold other viewpoints that I really, really dislike, or even find offensive. I think it's really important to acknowledge this. Like, people can have something to offer us, something valid, like a valid critique, even if we think a lot of the things that they believe in are really not great, or really horrible. That's the one thing. The, the, one, the one benefit is, like, it helps us to sort of refine our own thinking. It also helps us get through to people. And I think it helps us to have a better political dialogue overall. I feel like I've sort of lost my train of thought, so apologies if this sort of went off in different directions. But I feel really passionately about this. I want us, as a country in the United States of America, and in the world as a whole, I want us to converse about politics respectfully. And I want us to do that unconditionally, no matter how offensive the viewpoint other people are voicing is. That may seem radical, but I'm pretty radical. I believe in doing that. I believe that even if someone is race voicing a viewpoint that I think is like racist or xenophobic or misogynistic or just otherwise offensive, I still want to respect them as a person. I don't want to attack them, and I don't want to dehumanize them. I think that there's this danger if we let other people get us sort of worked up in that way, and we start dehumanizing them, often the irony is that what we're reacting to that they're doing is a form of dehumanization. So it's like, if I'm reacting to xenophobia, 
and then I start dehumanizing the person who's voicing the xenophobic views, I'm allowing myself to get sucked into their way of thinking. I think that's really terrible. I'm allowing that person to lead me in a bad way. They're pulling me into their way of thinking. That's not what I want to do. I want to resist that. I want to be like, hey, no, I'm going to show you respect as a person, and I'm going to hope, I'm going to hope that that influences you to get into a mindset where you can respect all people too. That's how I think we will break down racism and xenophobia. It doesn't mean we're acknowledging, like, it doesn't mean we're enabling xenophobia or racism, it means that we're, we're stopping it. And this is a fundamental difference that I have in viewpoint with some of my liberal friends. I've heard people disagree with this. This is what I believe. I'd love to hear from you. Please share if you have anything to say additional. Um, yeah, I'd love to hear from you. Thank you.